The now over year old iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max are no longer being sold by Apple as they were replaced with the bold, innovative, extraordinary, and all new iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. Bigger number, better phone. But as the name suggests, the 13 Pro really isn't a whole lot different from the latest and greatest models. And in fact, the 13 Pro is so close to the new phone that it might even be worth buying over the 2022 flagship altogether. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech. And today we're taking a look at the iPhone 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max. I don't have that phone myself, but it's exactly the same as the smaller one, just bigger. But we're looking at the phones as they move into 2023. I myself used it for an entire year after it came out until the 14 Pro. And obviously with the phone being only a year old, it's not going to be in any way a lackluster experience. And if you're using it right now, there's literally no logical reason to upgrade. Which is why I, a man with the most illogical possible employment in existence, as a YouTuber did just that. But do what I say and not as I do and take it from me, the 14 Pro is barely at all different from the 13 Pro. When I first got the 14 Pro and hadn't reset the older phone, I actually kept accidentally picking it up and using it without a second thought. So don't let that fancy new dynamic island fool you. The experience here is mainly unchanged. Now that's not a slam on the iPhone 14 Pro because fact is I loved my 13 Pro. It's an absolutely spectacular phone and it ticks all the boxes for me. A top of the line camera, long-lasting battery life, a gorgeous design, a beautiful OLED 120Hz screen that feels as smooth as butter. All of this makes for the 13 Pro and 14 Pro being some of the best user experiences money can buy, even if it is a lot of money. While the 13 Pro should be the less expensive option to the 14 Pro, there's a couple big asterisks next to that. For one, Apple doesn't sell it anymore. The lower tier option to the 14 Pro is the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus, phones that are only $200 less than the 14 Pro and have some pretty significant compromises. I would every time rather get a 13 Pro over those two phones if possible, but Apple no longer sells it, so what can we do? Finding it brand new might not be super easy. Some carriers may still have it in stock and could be even running deals on it until they clear them out. But beyond that, you may be forced to look at the used market. And over there, you'll probably get the phone for even a little bit less than you would an iPhone 14 and 14 Plus, which I think is absolutely worth it, considering the improvements you get. The phone is just as fast as the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus with the exact same chipset. It has three camera lenses instead of two. It has the Pro Motion display, which is 120 hertz, which makes for a much smoother feeling experience. It's just straight up a better phone. And this is coming from someone who usually recommends the non-Pro options. If things like Pro Motion don't appeal to you, maybe you don't even know what a refresh rate is, 120 hertz, and that's totally fine, you might want to look at the iPhone 13. Apple is charging $700 for it, and it's really not that different from the 14. It's a fantastic phone, and I would recommend it. But if you want to step up and don't want to shell up the money for a 14 Pro, the 13 Pro may just be one of the best deals moving into 2023 that you'll find anywhere, especially when it comes to upper tier iPhones. If you can't find it brand new or you'd prefer to go to the used market, we can take a look at eBay.com to kind of get an idea of the pricing. Now this does vary a ton and it also changes country to country. It doesn't always scale very well, unfortunately. But eBay.com, I was seeing it as low as $600, which is an insanely good deal. Now mind you, that was locked to like T-Mobile and stuff, and so that's something to watch out for because you need it to work with your carrier, obviously. But if you can find one that's locked for your carrier, you're saving a little bit of money there. And anywhere between $600 to $800 for a good condition, 13 Pro or even the 13 Pro Max is not a bad price whatsoever. You're probably saving upwards of $400, possibly even more, from the 14 Pro. If you can find a deal, this frankly straight up is the best value iPhone you can buy right now. The fact that I was seeing this for $600 is insane. Now there are a few things to watch out for. If it's iCloud locked or find my iPhone is on, you don't want it. For one, the phone may have been stolen, but basically someone's account is signed in, you can't sign out, and so that phone is practically just a brick. The other thing to watch out for is battery health. At this point, it's been a bit over a year. An iPhone of this age probably shouldn't be lower than about 90%. If it is, that might be a sign it was used very heavily. And again, just make sure you're getting a phone that's either unlocked or is compatible with your carrier. But assuming you can do all that, I'd say the best potential for value saved of any iPhone comes from a used 13 Pro. But yeah, that's pretty much the opening here out of the way. And so now let's get into the actual meat of this video, looking at the phone, my experiences with it over the last year, why I love it so much, and all of that good stuff. So better late than never, roll the intro.
Starting with the design, what is there even to say? This is an absolutely gorgeous smartphone, and it looks practically identical to the 14 Pro. In fact, putting them beside each other, the only real difference is, is the camera setup is somehow even bigger on the 14 Pro, and it was already huge on the 13 Pro, and the Apple logo got slightly bigger for some reason, but other than that, they look identical. Of course, you have no purple option with the 13 Pro, but you do have the nice Sierra blue, along with the silver, space gray, and gold, and most recently, we also got that nice green color like was on the 11 Pro. I myself got the space gray, and I quite liked it, although I went with purple this year just to change things up. The shiny stainless steel, the square design, likening back to the iPhone 5 and iPhone 4, it's just gorgeous. And while they've had this general design since the iPhone 12 Pro, and even the 11 Pro, that phone was just curved, I'm absolutely okay with this because I really think it's pretty much the perfect smartphone design. I don't know how you would make it much better than this. It looks so nice, it feels so nice in the hand, it's premium, it's a bit thick, a bit chunky, but the battery life is fantastic, and that's really important to me. And the display, what is there even to say? It's so, so good, and it's about the same as this year's display, besides the notch is the normal notch, not the fancy dynamic island. It is a smaller notch, though. The iPhone 13 and 13 Pro shrunk it down from the iPhone 12 line, and there's actually a pretty big benefit to this notch over the dynamic island. It's actually a little higher on the screen, leaving more room for content below it. For example, watching this video at a 2 by one aspect ratio on my iPhone 14 Pro, the notch actually cuts into the video, whereas on the iPhone 13 Pro, it would just be a black bar because the notch is higher up. It's a weird uh, little design difference. I'm not sure exactly why Apple decided to do that. I suppose maybe it looks a little nicer aesthetically, but it is genuinely a benefit with going for a regular notch. You might be missing out on a lot of the fancy animations and stuff, but honestly, they're not as useful as they are just kind of cool. You're also missing out on the always on display, which is done with the OLED panel going down to one hertz. On the 13 Pro, while I'm sure if Apple really wanted to, they absolutely could have done an always on display, you can't do it here. So you're stuck with having a black screen. And frankly, while I've been using my always on display since I got my 14 Pro, I hardly even glance at it. It definitely eats into battery life a bit, and it's not the selling point you might think it is. I could absolutely live without it, and I'm sure you could too. The display here itself is absolutely gorgeous, that OLED panel. You're looking at two size options, of course, the regular 13 Pro with 6.1 inches, and then there's the much larger 13 Pro Max, rocking the size of 6.7 inches. On the screen here, of course, is the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. But that's just because I don't have a 13 Pro Max, and it gives you some perspective on the size difference. What's really nice about this phone is, like the 14 Pro, it does have that 120 hertz, which makes it feel a lot smoother, a lot nicer to use. Even if you don't know exactly what that entails, go to a retail store and compare the 14 Pro with the 14, and you will notice it immediately. It just really adds to the iOS experience. This phone is also very delicate. I mean, it's glass on the back and the front. At least in theory, it's delicate, although in my experience, it's surprisingly durable. In fact, one of the first weeks I got my 13 Pro, it ended up falling from here. A gust of wind hit it. It landed on the concrete, but it was fine. Just some chips on the corner. I was pretty impressed. Even so, I would definitely not use this phone without a case and probably a screen protector as well. Another minor difference, although it might not be that minor for some people, is that the 13 Pro has a SIM tray, whereas the 14 Pro in the US does not. Now, I'm in Canada, so lucky me, I still get to keep my SIM tray, but if you're in the US and get a 14 Pro, you have to go to digital eSIM. eSIM, as far as I have heard, is extremely easy to use and totally fine, but if you're someone who goes traveling a lot to different countries and you like to get prepaid SIM cards or anything like that, then it is definitely going to be an inconvenience versus having a physical SIM tray for easy just swapping back and forth. I mentioned battery life is really good, but that's worth repeating. The Pro Max is definitely the better phone for battery life because it is larger, but it is powering a larger display as well. And in my own personal experience, the smaller 13 Pro was absolutely amazing for battery life. It could last me two days without issue. I might not use my phone as much as some people do, but I'm very confident it could get anybody through the day. A big reason the battery is so good is not so much the size of it, but the optimization of iOS and more specifically the A15 Bionic chipset. So let's talk about that. One of the best things about iPhones today is definitely software support and how long Apple lets you update for. We're talking six, seven years. And the best thing about it is that these phones on their latest versions generally don't feel slow. So a phone like this, which is only a year old, is still super duper fast, obviously, but so is one from about three years ago. So you can buy a phone like this and be confident that it's going to last you a good few more years and hopefully will never really feel slow even when it loses updates, which that's a long ways away. The 2015 iPhone 6s just lost support. For some perspective there. The exact specs, you got the Apple A15 Bionic chipset with six gigabytes 
gigabytes of RAM. If you're an Android user, it might not sound like a lot of RAM, but because Apple makes their own software for their own devices, they don't have to make it for a billion devices. They're able to optimize it and fine tune it. And again, that leads into how long they support their phones for and how smooth everything feels. And if you needed more confirmation, these specs are still totally up to date. The iPhone 14 and 14 Plus have the exact same chipset and amount of RAM, so you should have some extra confidence there. Also goes to show once again why the 13 Pro is a good buy over the 14. It's either as good or better in pretty much every way. I'm not going to keep wasting your time on the comparison between the phones, but there's just not a lot you're missing with going for the older model, except for maybe emergency satellite support, car crash detection, but really we're kind of grasping at straws here. And one place where the 13 Pro is definitely better than the iPhone 14 is going to be in the camera department. While the iPhone 14 has apparently gotten better with low light photos, it still only has two lenses on the back, whereas the 13 Pro, being a pro phone, has three. This gives us 0.5 times zoom with the 12 megapixel ultra wide, one time zoom with the normal 12 megapixel wide lens, and then three times zoom with the telephoto. Now that three times zoom was new for the 13 Pro, and while I was a little bit on the fence, I actually really liked having the three times over the two. I felt that it was more useful just because you're getting further in without any loss in quality. It's also great for basically macro shots to get really close to a subject, but if you want the best of both worlds, the iPhone 14 Pro having a 48 megapixel camera is able to do two times zoom by simply cropping down to 12 megapixels, thus giving basically a two times zoom without any loss in quality. So essentially, if you want two times zoom, 14 Pro, if you don't care, the 13 Pro is not far off in level of quality, even if the megapixel count might sound like it. This is an amazing camera, and I really enjoyed using it over the last year. It just consistently takes gorgeous photos in almost any condition. I was also very impressed with the low light situations. While I've been enjoying my 14 Pro in that sense, I found that this phone tended to do a very good job. One thing it does a lot that I like, when it comes to very dark areas, blacks, it just makes them black. There's no grain, it just has them black, so a photo like this of my dog, it did a really good job. And that goes for pretty much any situation you can find yourself in. And what I love about iPhone is that it offers the greatest level of versatility of probably any smartphone. You pull out your phone, you take a photo, and you know it's going to be good. When it comes to portrait photos, it is a little more finicky. I got a lot of great portraits, but having a dog who moves around a lot is my main subject. Sometimes you gotta take a few photos to get one that really catches the eye. Selfie camera is fantastic. I'm not gonna bother scaring you with my face. It's really, really good. Definitely no worries there. On the video side of things, you can do 4K, including ProRes video. As mentioned earlier, you can only do 4K ProRes if you have at least the 256 gigabyte. Otherwise, you're locked at 1080p, but you can, of course, do regular video at 4K, no problem. This is just because a ProRes takes up so much space. While you don't have the new action mode feature that stabilizes the camera, frankly, the 13 Pro already does great stabilization, but you still get cinematic video where it blurs the background behind the subject live in a video setting. Very, very cool. It can be a bit finicky, but the results look really nice when it does work. So overall, fantastic camera. It's probably the biggest reason to get the iPhone 13 Pro along with the display instead of something like the iPhone 14. And ironically enough, I said the exact same about the 14 Pro. I think it comes down to whether or not you can find a 13 Pro or you're comfortable with buying on the used market. Because honestly, the 13 Pro is so darn similar to the newer phone. It probably is worth it to save at least a few hundred dollars and not really lose out on a whole lot. But either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below, especially if you have the iPhone 13 Pro or used to have it and upgraded, or maybe you're thinking about buying it. What are your thoughts on the phone? Do you think it's good value right now? I strongly do feel like going into 2023, this probably is the best value iPhone, assuming you have a decent amount of money because it is still quite expensive and also assuming that you're okay with potentially buying used. But if you are, I mean, it's really hard to argue against it. It's a great phone and I really enjoyed my time with it. Moving to my 14 Pro has been nice, but it feels mostly the same. And that's not a bad thing because I loved my 13 Pro. And with that, I think I'm right about done here. I think I've covered pretty much everything. There's no need for benchmarks or anything. The phone is fast. It runs iOS like a charm. Any game, any app you can think of, it'll be able to do. It's just still really a flagship phone and it definitely performs like one. So if you found this video helpful or interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on my socials if you'd like to for some reason. Oh, that I thank you for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.